So we recently started the topic of the lithosphere, and so far we've talked about what the lithosphere is. Um, so that is the solid shell of the Earth. Um, that includes the continental crust, the oceanic crust, and the upper part of the mantle. Um, now, as part of the lithosphere, we've talked about minerals, and we now know that minerals are solid, inorganic substances that have unique structure and properties. So this means that each of these different minerals, they have a different structure, and they are made of different molecules or elements. So um, when we talk about minerals, we were talking about classifying minerals. And we were looking at how can we determine different minerals from each other. So the four, um, but the four tests that we would do essentially are color, transparency, hardness, and streak. Now color, there's two subcategories. There's idiochromatic color, which is when the element or the actual molecule of the mineral gives it that color. So for instance, gold was an example. Gold is that kind of yellowy color, and that is because of the actual atom that makes up gold. Allochromatic minerals, such as quartz, get different colors that are caused by impurities. So here we have three different colors of quartz, but they're all the same mineral. They just have different colors. Now, a perfectly clear um, mineral is a pure allochromatic mineral. That's what we've discovered. That's what we learned in the lab. Now, transparency is a thing as well. It's another category for testing, and you always look to see how much light passes through. If no light passes through, it's opaque. If some light passes through, then it is um, translucent. And if a lot of light passes through, then it is transparent. Then, of course, we talked about the hardness. So we test for hardness by trying to scratch at the mineral. Uh, in the lab, we use this copper coin to scratch at it, and we also used a steel knife to scratch at it. So depending on what gets scratched and what doesn't get scratched, you can classify it based on that. So talc is the softest uh, mineral, and diamond is the hardest mineral. So the scale goes from 1 to 10. The last uh, test that we would do is called the streak. So you would take your mineral here, you would rub it on a porcelain surface, and it leaves a powder. And we would look at the color of the powder, and that is what we call the streak. So if you notice, there is a different color mineral here. This is kind of purplish. But if you look at the streak that it leaves, it actually is more reddish, brownish. And this here, this is a dark gray mineral, but the powder it leaves is a brown powder. So uh, not all minerals will leave a streak. Some of them will not leave any streak. Some of them will leave like a very, very fine white powder. Um, it, that's all stuff that we kind of learned in the lab. So, of course, the topic of minerals is related to the lithosphere because we have to get them from the ground, and that's what the lithosphere is. So, minerals are found in rock, and these special rocks are called ores. You might have heard of people talking about diamond ore or uh, aluminum ore. That's because those minerals are embedded into those parts of the rock, and when we take that rock out, it's called the ore. Now, you take the ores and then you refine them into what we know as the minerals that we have nowadays. So it's not just when you're mining, you're not extracting the precise amount of quartz and diamond and gold. You're actually taking out the rock that it's part of because you want to make sure that you get everything. And then in the factory, they will be doing the refining. Now, locations that have a large amount of these minerals are called deposits. Now, they also have to be in a high concentration as well. 
And most deposits that we know of have been turned into mines because that's what we do. We tend to mine things from the ground uh, where there is a lot. If, it, if there's not a lot of the mineral, it's not really worth it for us to mine. So talking about mining, there are two types of mining. There is the traditional underground subterranean mining that is called subsurface mining. Subsurface just means underground. And this is the type of mining that we envision dwarves, like the dwarves in Snow White would be doing, or we would envision in old movies, um, the ones with like the, uh, the little carts and the pickaxes and the miners with the, the, uh, the headlights on top of their helmets. That's the typical mines that we think of. Um, these mines are specifically used for mining minerals that are really, really deep in the earth. Now, open pit mining is a more modern thing. And um, it's typically used when we find minerals uh, that are close to the surface of the earth. Uh, so what happens is we start to dig into the earth and we go around in like a square or in like a kind of like a circle pattern and you keep digging and digging and digging all the way to the bottom. Now sometimes you might need to expand the top to get to the bottom. Um, now you guys should be familiar with this kind of a mine. Think of the quarry before there was water. So the quarry would have this kind of shape to it. It would have a very deep part in the center. And then as you go along the edges, you would have these kind of steps where the uh, paths for the machines would take to be able to go up to the surface. So today we started talking about rocks. So rocks are made of many different minerals. Uh, which is why when you pick up a rock, you can see all kinds of different colors. You can see that it's speckled. There's different textures in it. Those are all the different minerals that it's composed of. Now, there are three types of rocks. There's igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And these rocks are all made very differently. So igneous rock is formed from molten rock magma that has been cooled and hardened. So when magma is pushed up to the surface of the earth, it explodes from a volcano or it gets pushed up through cracks in the bottom of the ocean floor, it will eventually cool and it forms into igneous rock. Now, there are many types of igneous rock. For instance, granite. We often use granite in our tabletops. It has like nice patterns in it. It's made of different colors, very pretty rock, very nice and hard rock. Obsidian is almost like a glass. It looks so shiny and glossy and it's black. Obsidian was often used to make arrowheads. And the other rock that we know of is pumice. Now pumice is a very interesting rock because pumice is formed in the mid-air when this magma is flung up into the air. And here, let me get a nice image of pumice for you, because I want you to see what it's made of. So here's some pumice. And if you notice, there's all kinds of little holes in it, little pockets. And that's because that when this is flung up into the air, it cools really quickly, but there are air pockets that get stuck in the rock. And so, this rock is actually really lightweight. In fact, it's so lightweight that it can float on water. The second type of rock is sedimentary rock. Now, sedimentary rock is formed after many millions of years. It, unlike igneous rock, it doesn't just form in a couple hours or in a couple days. It takes millions of years to form. And this is because it's made of sediments. Now, what are sediments? Sediments occur when rock is exposed to wind and to rain and to weathering in general. The wind and the rain and the water will push against the rock, it will rub against the rock, and it will force the tiniest bits of grains of rock to be removed from the surface. That's why if you look at river stones, let's take a look at river stones here,
That's why river stones looked so look so polished because they've been sitting in a river for so long that the water has been rubbing them and rubbing them and rubbing them and it smooths them out. It takes away the top layers of that rock and it brings it downstream. So eventually this sediment settles somewhere. It could settle in the bottom of a lake. It could settle in a valley because it was blown in by the wind from the mountains. And over many thousands of years, it will form layers. And eventually these layers get compacted and compacted and then more layers appear and then compacted and then more layers and then compacted until it turns into sedimentary rock. Now, if you notice, there are different colors, different stripes in this rock here. And that is because that all of these layers were formed at different times. And these layers are made up of different rocks as well, or different minerals. Now there's a couple of examples of sedimentary rock. There's sandstone, like such this one. Limestone is often used for sculptures. And then there's shale as well. The last type of rock is called metamorphic rock. And we call it metamorphic rock because it changes. It metamorphosizes. You know how like a butterfly was formed in a cocoon? The caterpillar eats, 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 eats. Then it forms a cocoon around itself and then it changes into a butterfly. That process is called metamorphosis. And metamorphic rock goes through a phase where it changes. So if you take igneous rock or sedimentary rock and it somehow manages to get underground, it gets pushed underground, pushed underground, pushed underground, and eventually it comes to a part near the mantle or near a hot spot in the crust and it gets warm, but it doesn't melt. It just gets warm enough that you can play with it like Play-Doh, but you probably wouldn't want to play with it like Play-Doh because it would be very hot. So this rock gets pushed and squeezed, like imagine you're squeezing Play-Doh, and then eventually it hardens. That is the new metamorphic rock. That is the change. So metamorphic rock requires heat and or pressure. Some examples are slate and gneiss. So slate was often used for roofing. So that is all that um, we wanted to talk about today. Um, to summarize it, let's look at the rock cycle. So we have magma, that's liquid rock. When it cools, it becomes igneous rock. Now this igneous rock can melt back down into magma or it can be weathered and turned into sediment. Now this sediment, when it gets compacted, it becomes sedimentary rock. Now this sedimentary rock and this igneous rock can both be subjected to heat and pressure to form metamorphic rock. And then finally, this metamorphic rock can melt to go back into magma and it can also be weathered to go back into sediment.